The next thing I might want to do is train my machine learning algorithm. And so this is this line actually right here produces four metrics. X train, X test, Y train, Y test. And basically what it says is we are going to train the algorithm and test the algorithm in one step. We are going to split the data in half. Not exactly in half, but we are going to, and I'm going to start out with 0.4 for test size. What that means is we're going to use 60% of the data to train the machine. Then we're going to use the other 40% to test it and see how that training go. So the 60-40 split is you know, 60% of 150 and then 40% of 150 chosen at random using this number as the seed, 42, because obviously if you're a nerd, you understand the significance of that number. It can be any number, but that number allows us to consistently retest that same data. If I don't, that's an optional parameter. If I don't include that, my tests could, because it's probability, my tests could have different results each time. This is pretty reliable data, though. Out in the real world, you, you definitely want to include a seed number. So now I'm telling it, here's we're, we're using these three lines to fit that data to a, a logical mathematical model. That's as much as I'm going to say about it because I don't want to get into logistic regression or model prediction. We're, we're just using that to clean up the machine learning data and fit it to a mathematical model. The next thing it does is it's going to print two reports for us, the confusion matrix and the classification report. These two things go hand in hand to answer the question of how did that training go? So this little thing up here, right under the word max, this little matrix is called the confusion matrix. And basically it's the score report based on the testing of the training data. So we trained the, we trained the machine and then we tested it. And we said, we're gonna give you 23 of this first type of flower 19 of the second type of flower, 18 of the third type. Now that's, that is a randomized numbers, but it's roughly a third of each. And basically, how many of those did you guess right? And if you see numbers that are in a diagonal like this, in a confusion matrix, what that means, if there's zeros everywhere else, is that it got 100% of them correct based on looking at those four measurements, the sepal length, the sepal width, the petal length, and the petal width. It got 100% of those correct, which is, you know, we've got 60. 60 guesses, 60 out of 60 were correct. And you can see here, when you have the, the, classification report, which is that second part, flower index is zero. If you have a 1.0, that basically says you got 100% right on all of those. So good. That's cool. Um, let's play around with this, though. Let's see how much does it take, how much data does it actually need to train this. So if, let's just say I bump it up to 90% test. So it's only gonna use 10% of the data to train it, which means it's going to train it using only 15 randomly chosen flowers. Let's see how it does with just 15. Okay, so still pretty good out of 135 it only got seven wrong. And all of them were in that specific category. So there's some similarity 
between the second and third type of flower that confused this when there's only 15. They're close enough that there, there's some confusion. The probability that it got them correct was lower. But keep it in mind, 10% uh, 10% training, 85% test, or 10% and 90% test is that's that's not very much training data. Okay, so you can see this this one was correct 84% of the time. This one was correct 86% of the time because the 7 and the 37 have different, it's a different denominator, that's why. But you can see how those error rates and the F1 score basically gives you an overall score of how we're doing. What are the probability that you're going to be correct guessing those flowers? There's a 91% chance of that if you show me data, I will guess that, that flower correctly hundred you know all the time okay so there's there's the the total number of, of data there for that flower and then these are some weighted averages uh, if you have some more complex data in this case they're not very meaningful because it's pretty, fairly simple data